Professor Maurer and I were having a conversation about some of the um, new features that were being added into Bitcoin. And it was really interesting that just in the most recent updates to Bitcoin, I don't even think they're in the program that you can download now, but they're in the code base, or at least starting to be in the code base. There are some additional features that have been added to the Bitcoin protocol in order to support uh, some of the um, interactions that we've been talking about in payments that we're used to from uh, usual interactions in this money space. And I just wanted to walk through real quick what's coming down the pike in the, in the Bitcoin pro protocol in general. And this are changes that have been built into the reference client or the Satoshi client, which is the one that you would download if you downloaded it from um, GitHub. Um, a little different than if you use Coinbase. Um, and so this picture here on the on the side shows you how this new protocol works. And the way it works is that um, it, it, the, the idea is that you would be working with a website or you would be working with a merchant in an online setting. And you would be going through some shopping cart. You'd be going through some process of buying and selling things. And at some point, you would click a pay now button. And that would send your shopping cart to the merchant. And the merchant would then take that information, would calculate a total for what you're expected to pay, and would send you send back this payment request to your wallet, uh, which would be running on your local computer. And your wallet would intercept that request. And it would then ask you, hey, um, you've just received a request from, say, pattersonshop.com asking you to spend 10 Bitcoin. Do you want to do that? Um, and that gives the user a chance to click OK. That goes back to the wallet. The wallet then generates the appropriate transactions, puts the transaction out on the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network, and at the same time responds back to the merchant here with that information. Um, the merchant responds immediately with this acknowledgement that the payment was made, and they both wait to see if the transaction shows up on the Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network and possibly the wallet app sends a message back to the customer with some kind of information that's in that payment acknowledgement. So what's interesting here are a couple things. First of all, what I want to point out is that this doesn't change what shows up on the blockchain. Uh, the blockchain remains as anonymous as ever, it remains with the same uh, information that's out there as ever. And what this is doing is this is creating a connection outside of the blockchain between the customer, the customer's wallet, and the merchant's website. And so the kinds of things that are in that payment request are really interesting because what it enables is it enables, when you, when you send that payment back right here, um, you're also sending with it a refund address so that if at some point in the, in the future, the merchant wants to refund money back to you, they don't have to contact you to try and get a, a address. Um, they already have an address on file that's associated with the order and they can just send the money directly back to you and don't have to have an interchange with you where they ask you for an address and maybe you get confused or something. The other thing that's interesting is that this payment request here um, has the capability to be digitally signed. Um, digitally signed and digitally authenticated in the same way that HTTPS uh, websites are authenticated. It means that the communication is secure um, as part of the protocol, but it also means that you have some confidence that the person who is sending you this request is actually coming from uh, pattersonmerchant.com. Um, what's really important about that is it's possible to defeat a particular kind of attack. And there's an interesting attack where if you were doing a transaction on a website, if your browser had been compromised, when you go to the website and you check out with a shopping cart, the merchant can provide an address to you which you should send your Bitcoin to. Well, right now what can happen is that if you have malicious software in your browser and, your, and that malicious software recognizes that you, the website has sent back an address, it can really re quickly rewrite that address and show you the wrong address you think that you're just cutting and pasting an address that the merchant has given you, but in fact, you're sending your Bitcoins off to some criminal botnet somewhere. 
Um, and so what this payment request, by virtue of signing it and um, using the same technology that um, SSL and HTTPS use, your wallet app can verify that digital signature in the way that we talked about with the in the asymmetric encryption lab and will know that this request is valid and that you're not being spoofed by someone intercepting and changing the integrity of that message anywhere from the point at which your merchant's web server releases it through the internet into your computer. Um, and then when you send the payment back, it can, like I said, it can come with a refund um, as well. None of this changes what shows up on the blockchain. It just establishes a connection between you and the merchant to make this payment easier. The last thing that's interesting about this payment request is because it's digitally signed, when the wallet receives this address, that complicated numeric character address that's, you know, whatever, 30 characters long, because this has been signed, your wallet can actually present to you a message that says, do you want to send 30 Bitcoin? And rather than giving you that address, they can actually tell you the name of the merchant to whom that wallet, to whom that payment is being sent. And you have confidence that that address is matched to that merchant because it's been digitally signed by that merchant. So this whole technology is creating a side channel communication between the customer and the merchant to make some of the um, uh, to make some of the complication of making a payment easier and also to uh, prevent some kind of security attacks that can happen along the way and also prevent you from mistyping addresses, um, which is a possibility. And if you go to the current client now, um, you can see some of this stuff show up. So if I hit send, I can send someone uh, a Bitcoin, but I can also make a request to receive Bitcoins. And so I can say, this is me, or this is the name of the address I want to send it to. I want to request 30 Bitcoins. Please remit your Bitcoin for the alpaca socks you ordered. And if I request that payment, right now, I don't get the full technology that's available in this new payment protocol, but you can see that it starts to be, be uh, available here, including a message, including some information about the amount. So what remains to be done is just some capability to sign it with a, with a, um, uh, with a digital certificate in the same way that your web pages are signed when it's an HTTPS connection. All right. So if you're interested in knowing more about that, there is a web page that describes the whole protocol located here. And you can read through the whole thing um, in gory detail. Uh, about what's coming down the pike. All right, so it's really interesting that that should be showing up right now in the context of this course and it's worth thinking about what kinds of things is that helping to prevent? What is that enabling? Uh, how does that make the transaction process easier? And what cost does it come with? How, how is the ideals of Bitcoin changing as a result of this? Okay, thanks a lot.